Amen. And it is also going to go beyond paying your tithes. It's going to go beyond sowing your seed. All of that are, all of these I've mentioned are powerful indices that spells prosperity. But there is something called vocational industry, which is a vital aspect of the teaching that we ought to embrace as saints to enjoy financial prosperity. Amen? Now, I would like you look, to look at this scripture. We're going to look at a couple of scriptures and then we'll begin to go into the application. In Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah 1 from verse 5 to 10, it said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. In other words, Jeremiah had been given a divine vocation. Come on, say divine vocation. Yes, Jeremiah was given a divine vocation from womb. Before he was born, the issue of his vocation has been established. But, you know, in verse 6, he said, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto, unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. In other words, Jeremiah, the issue of your vocation is already concluded. You are not going to have any challenge with it. You will fulfill your, your vocation. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, I receive grace to understand and to interpret my personal vocation from you. And I receive grace to be industrious in the, my divine vocation in the name of Jesus Christ. So when we talk about vocation, we're talking about your assignment. We're talking about what? Your assignment from God. What you are called to do. Some people see vocation as a training, a skill, something you are skilled about, uh, uh, you're, you're trained to do something you have been skilled or given or you acquired skill for those are good uh, definitions of the word vocation maybe as time progress i'll look at the few definitions i've been able to craft out here when we talk about vocation it actually means your calling your assignment even your ministry it has to do with what God has ordained you for. That's your vocation. And you need to discover it and then apply your life to it because your wealth creation is in your vocation. Wealth is not going to respond to you if you sit down and then you're just believing God passively and doing nothing about your life. You're going to be sitting down waiting for manna to fall from heaven. It doesn't work that way. You must discover your work and then get to work to make things work. And then as you work, rendering services in your vocation and you are industrious about it, God is going to bless the work of your hands. If you don't have a work to do, there is nothing for God to bless. These are practical aspects that complement the prof prosperity message. And if you don't engage in them, you're not about going to see the promise, promises of God's word coming to pass in your life. But in Jesus' name, you will see God's word gaining fruition in your life in Jesus' name. So God said, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Now this man has a massive vocation here. Jeremiah is a prophet with a great what? Vocation. His vocation is intercontinental. 
is this guy is going to be pulling down structures and is going to be putting in place structures that's an awesome assignment that's a heavy mandate now my prayer for you in this session as we look at the volume two of enjoying financial abundance we look at volume one yesterday is that your eyes will be opened to see your vocation now in mark chapter 3 Mark 3 from verse 13, and he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him, and he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils. And Simon is son named Peter, James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, and his son named them Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder. And Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot which also betrayed him. And they went into an house and the multitude come together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. Now guess what happens when you begin to apply yourself to your vocation you will be so busy you wouldn't even have time for food. That's what happened here. Jesus had a vocation and then he identified the people that were supposed to be part of the company of his vocation. And let me say this very seriously. God already named you before you were born. God named you with an assignment before you were born. God gave you a vocation with a name. That's why I took my time to read the names here. All the people that he chose here they were chosen out of what? Out of a vocation that God had in mind for these people before they were born. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Very important. So your vocation gave you a name. So we saw him giving a name to somebody else who wasn't bearing the proper name. In fact, <laughs> John and James, he called them sons of thunder. It was a vocation. Are you following what I'm saying? Your vocation has a name. And has given you a name. That was why he changed Abraham to Abraham. That was why he changed Jacob to Israel. Everybody came with a name of an assignment. Receive your ability to discover your assignment. And to discover your place in that assignment. Because what you call wealth is simply a consignment in your assignment that's what you call wealth that's what you call prosperity and you won't enjoy the consignment of your assignment if you are not in the place of assignment that's why i specifically tag this volume two as vocational industry now the bible tells us in the book of romans 11 verse 29 it said for the gifts and callings of god are without repentance what he has called you for he will not change his mind about it what he has designed you for is not going to repent about it. It's an eternal thing. It's a done deal. It's a concluded deal. So whether you agree with it or not doesn't change it. Whether you have discovered it or not doesn't change it. It is your duty to discover God's purpose for your life and align your life to it as early as possible so that you can begin to enjoy what the Bible refers to as early mercies. Lift up your right hand and say, I will enjoy early mercies. Now, in Galatians chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3, he said, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ. That's his vocation. 